Hey, Drive Time, welcome back. Hey, normally about this time is where I'd start introducing our guest and telling you what they're going to bring to the table. But for those of you who have been following along with us, you know we've been doing this for a little over a year now, which means we have some great material built up. And for those of you who haven't been with us since the beginning, you've missed out on some really impactful stories and just some really profound testimonies. So what we want to do is every once in a while, we want to go back and we want to share those with you. Uh, this isn't really a best of, but just some ones that, you know, kind of spoke to us uh, and we want to share them with you again. And even if you did see them the first time, they're just that good. So sit back and get ready for a drive time rewind. <laughs> Drive time. Welcome back. Uh, today we have an opportunity to speak with uh, uh, a friend of a friend and definitely uh, a, a, another co-laborer in the kingdom. Uh, this is, uh, I'm excited to introduce you to uh, John Jones, who goes by JJ. And I had an opportunity uh, to watch a, a video and in, in, in our information on our link, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to click over and check out his video if you'd like. But uh, he does just an amazing uh, ministry uh, using a, uh, a converted x-ray van to uh, evangelize to his community. So, uh, JJ, welcome to Drive Time. Thank you for being here. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, just, just give me a little bit of background about uh, what the mobile media van is. Well, first of all, Dave, it's a pleasure to be on your program. Thank you for inviting me. And the mobile media ministry, it's basically, it's, it is, you describe it quite well. It's a, it's a converted uh, mobile x-ray truck. And what we have on the side are three giant screens. It's the LED screens, the screens like you see in Times Square or a mobile jumbotron at a game a football game, this big LED screens. And so that's attached to the side of the truck. And we're able to show movies. Um, we have a popcorn machine, so we hand out popcorn and we drive into neighborhoods. Sometimes churches invite us if the churches are having a community outreach. Other times we simply go into a community, turn on the screens and we instantly hear a crowd and uh, we, we show a movie and then we can speak into the movie we have Bibles that we can hand out for people who want to know more about uh, what God has to say about their lives. And we're there to just to present Christ to people who normally don't go to church or that don't have an, a real solid idea of what being a Christian is. And so that's the ministry. It's, uh, it's really user-friendly, really simple, and um, we can drive to parks, neighborhoods. We were concerned once if we had to get some type of license. And we checked into some city municipalities. There is no law on the books about showing a movie in a park because it's never been done before. Because a lot of there's nobody that drives around with a giant movie truck, so there are no laws against it. And so we uh, we take advantage of that and just share Christian movies. Well, that is really cool. Um, and uh, again, you, your ministry has evolved over the years, but. Where where did you get the the vision for this? Because there's there's a beginning to the story. We're kind of catching up, you know, in the middle of the story right now. But there there's a beginning to it. Yes, it, it began many many years ago. Um, I was part of a singing group called the New Dawn Singers, and I I didn't sing, but I was a technical sound uh, video guy. And what we would do with the singing group, we would have giants. We have five slide projector screens behind the singers. <clears throat> And while they would sing, my job was to project images, beautiful sunsets or seascapes that kind of added to the production value of the production. And um, so we were going to churches and we would put these beautiful slides up on the screens and the kids would sing about God's love and his beauty. And, and uh, we came to one particular church and the screens wouldn't fit in. And so the pastor said, maybe we could go outside on the, on the parking lot and do it. Well, I said, well, if you have extension cords, we can do that. And so he did. And so we went out in the parking lot and we put these screens up. And all summer long, we've been going to different churches and we would have maybe 30 or 40 people in the church that would come out. I counted over 300 people that stopped and were paying attention to this production. And I thought, my goodness, we should have been doing this all summer long. Never mind behind closed doors. Let's be out in the public so people can hear the testimonies of these kids. 
and learn of God's beauty and what God wants to say into lives. And, and so that was the uh, straw or the, the, it, the spark, I think you should, would, would call it, that started this hunger in my heart to be outside with any kind of visual presentation because you get the curiosity of the community and then we have a message that we can speak into it. To the, the, this society is so visually orientated with phones and computers and television and theaters. So visual communication, it's real simple. People will stop and see what's going on. And we present the gospel message and we hand out Bibles and we pray with people and, and that's our ministry. So, um, and I'm gonna ask a loaded question because I, I, I know where yeah. from watching your video, uh, really this hit, this isn't an overnight success. This is, this is a long story. Um, and, uh, you know, with any long story comes this idea, and, and this is really what I want to focus on uh, here on Drive Time, is faithfulness to a vision. Yeah. And um, I would love for you to, to paint the picture for the guys who are watching yeah. about, you know, this isn't, you know, an overnight success, yeah. and this is a, a, a lengthy labor of love for you, yeah. uh, and, and, you know, through ups and downs and financial struggles, you've had to stay faithful to a vision that God gave you. So, mm -hmm. so if you would, um, you know, if you could explain the, the time yeah. frame and yeah. the, uh, just some of the struggles you had to face. Yeah, well, this is a 20-year project. And when I saw the vehicle, I was going to work, actually, and I saw it parked on this corner, a big old white mobile x-ray truck. And I thought, my goodness, wouldn't that be cool to get that and go out in the neighborhoods and share Christ with people because the wind won't blow this over because it's a big old truck. And so that was my thinking. And I found out that it was for sale. And... Uh, I didn't have any money. I, in fact, I went to the aunt who was selling it. He told me he bought it at an auction and he was going to make a mobile home. But his wife said, I'm not going to get that thing. And so he, she made him put it on the corner to be, to be sold. And so I didn't have any money, but I said, I would like to buy this vehicle. And he told me, well, I only want $300. I mean, you know, I only want $3,000 for it, but you need to pay me at least $300 a month. And I was raising five children at the time and I didn't have the money. I said, sir, I don't have the money, but can I bring something to you every, every month, a monthly payment? He said, yes, but if someone comes in here with the full amount, I'm just gonna sell it outright and give you your money back. So it was a fair deal. So my prayer for the next year is that nobody would buy that truck and it's set on the corner there and nobody bought it. And slowly, and, and that's a little miracle too, because I had five children, I worked, and my wife had every penny accounted for for raising our children and the mortgage and the electricity and everything else. So, and my check from job, my job went right into the bank account. So when I told my wife I was doing this, she said, where are you gonna get the money? I said, I have no idea. I'm gonna trust the Lord to make it possible for me to get at least 300 bucks a month. And the only thing I could think of doing was shooting video and so I began to shoot weddings and I never lost never lost a payment due date because these weddings kept popping up and I did I start I'm gonna do these weddings really good so I can get referrals and God allowed me to, to shoot weddings to get the money to pay for the van. And so at the end of the year I was able to pay it off and what was really funny Dave I had paid my last payment and he said, okay, here's the keys, here's the title. You got to move it. I'm thinking, uh, where, where am I going to park this thing? I mean, it's a huge mobile x-ray truck. I had no idea where I was going to park it. But that was the deal. He said, I got to get it off my property. So I drove it home. In fact, I drove it home at 4 o'clock in the morning because I didn't want any traffic on the road because I never drove a thing this big. I drove it home, parked it in front of my house, and I was so excited that I, when my wife woke up, I got up three o'clock in the morning, went to get it. And I said, Lori, the car is out. I got the band's outside. You guys see it. First thing she said was, where are you going to put it? I said, I don't know. I have no idea where I'm going to put it, but I have it. And that was the next stage. And when the guy was faithful in all of this, I was walking through church one day 
and I was telling someone, I don't know where I'm going to park this vehicle. It's, I, I can't park it in front of my house. It's too big. And the alderman said, you can't park a industrial sized vehicle in the neighborhood, basically. You have to move it to someplace else. I took it out to my church. My church says every square inch of this parking lot is plowed during the winter time. So you can't leave it here. So I was in this catch 22, rock and a hard place kind of thing. And this gentleman said, you could park it here. I have some property in Waukesha and you can park it there. I said, well, thank you so much because I have to move it like Monday and this was a Saturday. I parked it at his place and it stayed there for the next 14 years. He didn't know I was gonna be. <laughs> in fact, when it came time to move it after 14 years, the van had sunk six inches to the ground. We had to go to Home Depot to get gravel to, so we can drive it out of the, the, the pit it had sunk into. I had to rent a chainsaw to cut down sapling trees that had grown up around it for those 14 years because it had set in a field and literally was, was shielded from the public. You could see a little bit of it as you drove by, but otherwise it was like in a, a little forest there. But I kept believing that God wanted this ministry to happen in his time. And I was gonna be faithful and I was gonna wait until the time was right. And I would go out there and start it up every few weeks, every month or so, because I didn't want the oil to turn the tar. I just knew I had to start it up every now and then. And it had been sitting there for maybe about three years. And one time I went out to start it, I could not get near it because there was so many bees in the area. It was just hundreds, maybe thousands of bees all over the, the property. So I couldn't get near it. So I would wait, I waited another couple of months and I went there, still bees, thousands of bees. So I said, okay, I'll wait until winter. So I waited until January, it was 20 below zero. I went out there with a flashlight just to start it up, opened up the door, went inside. And at the top of the steps was this humongous big black thing. I turned on my flashlight, it was a beehive. What had happened was the bees had made a hive inside the truck. And I told this to the owner. He said, that's incredible because all summer long, vandalism was taking place on all these vehicles, but nobody went near your truck. And I said, praise the Lord, that's just like God was protecting my vehicle with all these bees that was there. And that was one of those kind of little things that made me know that God is, is with me in this. The, the bill could, could have been completely vandalized, but the bees made that hive and they kept my van safe in that year. At another time, I went there to start, start it up and on this window was a big sign, cash for your junk. Apparently somebody has seen that vehicle sitting there for month after month, year after year and thought, this guy might as well get some cash for this thing. And I gotta tell you, Dave, it was a little temptation because I'm raising five kids. We have one income coming in, the kids are growing. We were, every penny was important. And when that big sign said, cash for your junk, and it's maybe five years and then sitting there in the field. And it was like, boy, is it is it gonna happen? Or is it just, I'm just wasting time. Here's an opportunity to get money for my family. Maybe I should just cash it in. I tore the sign down, you know, folded it up, tossed it, forgot about it. I come back two weeks later, another sign, bigger. Cash for your junk. There's a business card there. Call me right away. You can get good money for scrap metal. It was like another temptation to give up my vision. Another temptation to like give in. It's not going to work. You get cash and your life will be fine. But I trusted the Lord. I said, Lord, I believe this is a vision for me. I'm not going to go this route. I'm not going to cash in. I'm just going to wait. And so the vehicle just sat there and began to settle deeper into the ground. <laughs> and they sat there for 14 years, totally, until I got up. Until really what happened was that some, some leaders at my church began to believe in it and thought, maybe we can give some funding to this and get it going. I think they saw that I believed in it so much that they said, let's get some funding and let's see if we can launch this thing. 
And so I got enough funding just to get the engine and the hoses that all had decayed, the muffler, everything that had just rotted away over those years, and that was replaced. And the engine was overhauled, and that was the start of the light at the end of the tunnel. So, and all through that, what I hear is just, you know, the, the temptation to give up was, was real and it was yeah. constant and it was, you know, every time you went out there, there was another reason you could have and should have walked away, uh, but you stuck with it. And one of the interesting things that, that you and I talked about mm -hmm. uh, was that while time passed and yeah. this van just sat there, technology yeah. changed. Yes, and yes. It went from the slide you know, projectors, slide screen projectors to LED screens. Yes. And suddenly this van became even more useful for the technology of today yes. versus the technology yes. from 20 years ago. Yes. I, I had planned, Dave, to go out at night, you know, 20 years ago when it got dark so that you could actually see the screens. And so that never ended my mind about LED technology because it wasn't existing then. But I think it was God's plan. He saw my heart. He knew what's, what was coming. And it had to sit there for the right time in which all these things intersected properly. The vision for the folks at the church, the technology, the van that was sitting out there in the field that was really protected um, by the shrubbery that grew around it. In fact, when I took it in the first time, the, the mechanic says, where'd you have this thing stored for all those years? I said, out in the field. He said, that's impossible. He said, there's no dry rot on the tires. I said, well, the sun never hit the tires because all the vegetation that grew up. So the, the tires, <laughs> they were never exposed to the sun for dry rot. So the vegetation, in a sense, was preser preserving the vehicle as well. So that was all part of Guy's plan. I really believe that. So through through all of this, again, what what I hear uh, yeah. when we talked about it earlier, and what I, you yeah. know, what I hear you saying now is there's just a level of, of faithfulness to a vision that God gave you, yeah. and just your willingness to trust Him. Yes. Yeah. So and that's kind of where um, you know, while I love that that we have this great opportunity to to highlight another ministry that's not unlike our uh, ours in the yeah. sense of trying to you know, be a visual uh, representation of God's kingdom and, and yeah. to, to share something for the growth of the kingdom. Um, what I want to do is, is, uh, you know, what would you say, you know, now that you're, you're 20 years deep into this yes. and you've had those struggles, but yeah. now you're also on the other side of those struggles where you, you see a completed van and you yeah. see um, yeah. You know, the crowds gathering around in the middle of the yeah. daytime with balloons. And, you know, you, you told me about the barber shop that got set up inside there. Yeah. Once. yeah. Um, so what do you say to these guys that feel like God's given them a vision? God's given them something, yeah. but they just don't know how it's going to work. Sure. They don't. The path isn't clear. Yeah. They know where they want to go. They don't know how to get there. What do you yeah. say to those guys? Well, you know, it's, it's patience. And, and my role model is Moses. And, you know, he had to wait 40 years tending sheep before God put him into the ministry that God intended him to have. And sometimes our time frame, it's not instant. It's long. And But during that period, God is still working. Um, in my case, he's working on the, the technology had to change to meet the vision that I had in mind. But God didn't forsake me. He didn't abandon me. My job was to be faithful. And the temptations that came up to abandon were there. I had discouragements. There were people who said, how's that truck doing out there? And maybe, maybe there's some people I would see almost every month. How's it going? How's it going? And this went on for years. And finally, people thought, it's never going to happen. It's never going to work. And so you have to fight through discouragement. You have to stay focused that I'm serving God. I'm serving the King. He knows my heart. He knows what's been planted in me. And Jesus has given us a job to do. He told us we have a job. Go out into all the world and share the good news. That's our job. And he uses your skill sets, your abilities, and the equipment that you have. I had a truck. 
I'm visually a photographer. I had the um, dream. I, there's a need. And now my job was to be faithful and wait until all the elements came together at the right time. And that's what I did. And now I'm seeing the fruit of it and it's growing. It's growing even more than I even thought now with the, with the whole COVID thing, because not only am I reaching into neighborhoods, but a lot of churches want the vehicle because the congregations are meeting outside and people are in their cars. And I broadcast over at them and I put the pastor up on the big screen and then the songs. And so we're doing outside worship services. In addition to, I had planned only to work in the summer months when kids are out in the street. Now I'm working year round. So the Lord even knew that the band was gonna be more than just one season of the year. It's gonna have multiple year round purpose. And I had no idea that was gonna happen, but I put myself in position to obey God and to trust him and walk forward and God opens up doors. He keeps opening up doors. Well, that, that is awesome. And it, it, it's a great reminder for all of us that, you know, we, we don't know how long the story is going to take and we, and we don't see the yeah. entire, you know, the entire path that God lays out in front of us, yes. but he's just asking us to trust him. He's just yeah. asking us to have faith yeah. that, that he knows what, what yeah. the rest of the story looks yeah. like. Um, so let let me ask you this this one one question um, uh, before we before we wrap up is if you could if you could tell those guys that are are struggling with that vision or how to step into that that calling um, if there was one thing you would you would tell them to do just this week uh, what would that be? Okay, and I, I'll speak firsthand on this. Do not depend on your own. Don't allow any shortcomings that you see um, cause you to give up the vision. I had no money for this thing. People would tell me, you can't afford this. How do you even get the screens? Where are you going to get the generator power? Where are you going to get, where are you going to park it? I mean, don't allow the doubts that can kind of suffocate your vision. Take control. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus and say, I'm going to trust you, Lord, for this. Never mind the slings and arrows from people or the doubts or the fears or all the negative vibrations you may get from others. I'm going to stay on focus because I'm serving the Lord and he will provide the things I need in order to carry out the vision I have. So you may not know where it's coming from. I had no idea where I was going to park that truck when I bought it. I simply drove it home in front of my house in my alderman and said, you got to get that thing out of this neighborhood. <laughs> I had no idea, but I trust the Lord. And he led me to a guy that gave me the field, sat there for 14 years. And little, all the way through this vision, God meets me at the point of need, always at the point of need. My job is to be obedient and trust him. Trust and obey. And then God will move you forward. That's, that's, that's my uh, victory song. I just trust him and I obey him and God keeps directing and leading. Well, that's, that's a great word. Mm -hmm. um, gentlemen, I, I, I certainly can't say it any better than that. Just trust and obey and, and stay faithful to the vision that God gives you. Mm -hmm. um, JJ, thank you for sharing your story with us. Uh, thank yeah. you for uh, uh, sharing your time with us. Uh, gentlemen, if, again, if you want to know more about uh, JJ's uh, mobile media ministry that he has, uh, whether that sparks a vision for you or this is something you want to support, uh, in our uh, information on the link, uh, you'll see the link to, to his YouTube video where you can learn uh, more about his story and, and see firsthand what he's doing. So, gentlemen, until next week, uh, have a great week and continue to trust and obey the Lord.